the most affecting moment in Near Automata is a request from Pascal to A2. Erase my memory or kill me. Pascal is the most stable character in all of Nier Automata. He is a student of philosophy, a leader to his community, and a teacher to the machine children in his peaceful village. He thinks for himself, and he's thoughtful towards others. He chooses to be a pacifist, where everyone else finds purpose in their violence. Pascal is a good person, but in only a few short hours, his village is torn apart. From the inside, by a logic virus, and from the outside, by cannibals in the forest. Pascal escapes with the children to an abandoned factory, only to be pursued by hostile machines. He gives up his pacifism to fight, but ultimately, the children act on the fear that he taught them to feel, and they take their own lives to relieve that very feeling. And this good man has no answer to that. In Automata, we see a whole bunch of machines self-destruct after their purpose has been fulfilled. This flying robot wishes to find just one who can beat him in a race, and when you do, he offs himself. This dojo master seeks to grow as powerful as he possibly can, and when he discovers that that isn't enough to best you, he ends his own existence. This kind of stuff is played for comedy, the joke being that these goofy machines place meaning in something dumb. And then, whether they succeed or fail, they realize their purposelessness, and they blow themselves up. Hilarious, so... Oh. oh. And the androids take that a step further. From the outset, your purpose is a lie. Units 2B and 9S are a part of Project Yorha, a task force of androids who must reclaim Earth from the alien invaders and their machine army so that mankind can return from the moon. This is the premise, and with each revelation, its foundation grows weaker. The aliens that invaded Earth are long extinct, wiped out by the machines that they created. And humanity was ended long before the aliens even arrived. Not by violence, but by a ruthless plague. The androids were built in order to protect mankind, but they deliberately undermined themselves in order to hide these truths, thus preserving their purpose. And as for the machines, well, they were created in order to defeat the enemy. But should they ever annihilate the android threat completely, well, they would lose their purpose as well. Neither side can win this war, because victory makes their existence meaningless. So both sides engage in self-sabotage, in order to preserve that meaning. The androids trigger a backdoor logic virus to wipe out all the androids under Project Yorha, and the machines create deficiencies in their network that ultimately lead to independent colonies that weaken the army at large. Both sides are 100% committed to maintaining the purpose that they were given at their creation, despite the fact that it doesn't really apply anymore. The machines don't need to take Earth for their masters, and the androids have no humans to win it back for. Their violent purpose is no longer meaningful, and it's clear that both factions are small enough in number to share this world, yet they perpetuate an endless war, because the lack of purpose does not compute. And that's the existential crisis here. Purpose is kind of a dumb thing to have. But what is the point of living without it? When that purpose vanishes, when all that's left for you to feel is the heartbreak of your failure or the emptiness of your success, then why are we still here? Just to suffer? That lingering presence of something lost, that feeling of losing it over and over again every time that you remember what you used to have, it's not easy. In this moment, Pascal cannot imagine anything more for himself than the pain that he feels right now. And his destruction is no different than the machines that we find around the wasteland. That's why Yorha and the machine hive mind go so far in order to preserve something so pointless and ugly. And the question that we should all be asking right now is, are they right? Well, no. And 2B turns out to be the counterexample because she hates her purpose and still chooses to be. Turns out, her model designation was a lie. She was not designed to fight machines like the real 2B models. She was designed to execute the inquisitive 9S models who just keep stumbling upon the truth about humanity's extinction. 
undermining the purpose of the androids. 2B has killed 9S many times. This is explicitly stated in a stage play written by director Yoko Taro, but it's also the subtext at the ending of the A route. Her job is to execute her unsuspecting friend when Command deems that he knows too much, which means that she has absolutely every incentive in the world to keep him from asking the right questions. That's why Tubi comes off as callous. Each 9S that she is reintroduced to has had their memory restored to factory settings, and the more that that new model learns, the sooner that he will die by her hands. Tubi could refuse to kill 9S? But if she does, Command will erase her memories, and she'll be forced to kill 9S all the same. With every savage execution, an inevitable loss, she consciously makes the choice to continue to be the person that she has been for as long as possible. Replaying the A route after knowing this is fascinating. Tubi hates her purpose, but when death comes for her, she fights even when she is doomed. With her fate sealed, her only request is for A2 to carry her memories on. And that's in contrast to Pascal, who asked for his to be erased. Tubi has, over and over, chosen to live on with the heartbreak inside of her, valuing her memories as her most important commodity, while Pascal requires his to be erased if he is going to take one step out of this rusty graveyard. They treat their tragedies differently because their purposes are inherently different. And I'm not talking about Tubi's designation here. I'm talking about her purpose. I'm talking about the one thing that she does consistently fight for, above everything else. Her memories. Her right to hold on to her experiences. Even the tragic ones. On a first playthrough, we see Tubi as apathetic and cold, but surprisingly passionate whenever 9S is in trouble. It's only with the context of her designation that we understand why she clenches her fist upon realizing that 9S has lost his memories of their battle together, why she reacts so emotionally when Adam takes her friend, why she breaks down into tears when forced to kill the only person that she's ever cared deeply about. The context of her emotion is embedded in her memories, and without them, she has no purpose except the designation that she hates. Nobody wants to fight for something that they don't believe in. That's why Pascal is a pacifist, and why 2B is so uninterested in her day job. Purpose isn't something that gets handed down. It's not even something that you're born with. If you want to find meaning, don't look up, look around you, at everything there is to live for. It's the screen you're watching this on. It's the shelter over your head. And of course, it's the people that you care about, as contextualized by the memories and associations that you've established with them. It's the expectation that you'll be able to create new experiences textured by your old ones. And at the very end, you're tested on whether or not you believe that. Nier's final request to you to delete your memory for another player is not a request to forget your time with the game. It's a request to roll back everything that you've progressed toward. The progress that you've made after two dozen hours with these characters, in this combat, in this green and gray world, choose to make all of it immaterial. Because that progress didn't matter. When the race become the strongest beat the game, does that make you happy? Or does it leave you empty, knowing that your achievement means nothing? Existentialism can make having a tangible purpose seem absurd, but it cannot make your memories meaningless to you. They will always color the way that you see the world. Real purpose is in the emotion that we feel motivated by the experiences that we make every day.